As far as the eye can see, it's been a land of controversy, and today, peace reigns. Hi, everybody. Welcome to At Your Leisure. I'm Chad Booth, and today we are out with some community leaders and uh, some uh, locals who love the trail system out in the San Rafael Swell to take a look at life after the public lands bill. And to be honest with you, it looks every bit as good as it did before the public lands bill, except there's one other thing, there's certainty. So let's find out a little bit about what they've accomplished with this lands bill. Since the land bill was passed, um, there was a lot of misunderstanding on the language of the land bill, what it meant. A lot of people interpreted it that everything was turned into wilderness, there was all the roads closed, there was no access. Since it's been passed, people have come to explore to find out what was closed, and they've found that really nothing has been closed. For us, we just, you had to, we had to see whether we were gonna lose an arm, you know, if we ended up at the monument, or if we just lost a couple digits. And so we're, we're satisfied. Uh, we've not seen any negative effects uh, to our economy, to our lifestyle, to our recreation. There's a misnomer that the swell's closed. It's not. There's not a trail closed in this swell that was, was open before the bill is now open now and will be open as, as long as we have good people fighting to keep those trails open. I come to the conclusion that I, I wouldn't do anything different. Uh, the last two weeks, weekends, BLM has told us that we have 5,000 visitors uh, on the wedge and down towards uh, Swinging Bridge. And so that's a record for us. And if there's 5,000 people there, that means there's another 5,000 hid, hidden out and around, riding ATVs, motorcycles, and, and having a good time. You know, a lot of things were basically thought that they, we were closed off to the public, basically. And, you know, this is public lands. We want to keep it public. But I think by this public lands bill, we're making a surety that it is kept open to the public. Even though you have a lands bill in place, we still have to watch and make sure that everything ends up just like we want it. And so we've hired a consultant in Washington, uh, Cody Stewart, to help us do that. Uh, so the, the, the war goes on for us. And with the signing of that bill and the implementation of the plan, it is true, and we've proven today, that there is a little bit of something for everybody. And this is the perfect junction to point it out, because on that side of that road is wilderness. On that side of that road is wilderness. In the great big area in between, all the way from here down to I-70, it's multiple use recreation land designated and protected for that purpose. And there are roads that go through the wilderness areas to connect you to the outside world. So it really has ended up being a painful, long, hard fought, but worthwhile endeavor. Well, right now it's time for us to endeavor finding a new place for you to explore in our where to. I'm Reese Stein at your leisure in Murray and wouldn't it be nice if there were a place close to your home where after work or school you could hop on down and maybe wet a line and catch a fish? Wait a minute, there is. Often the fish may not always be the biggest and other times you wish you'd brought a net. I love it, it's just, it's just a fun place to relax you know, and catch some big fish. Yeah. What's it like trying to bring one of those monsters in? Well, it's, it's a kick in the pants, the tug's the drug. <laughs> James Manzanato of Leighton loves showing off big broodstock planter rainbows he catches at Bountiful Pond along the Legacy Parkway. It's just one of several small fishing holes that have popped up in many suburban neighborhoods for easy access. Steve Bridge is getting a lesson from grandson Dustin at Willow Pond in Murray, close to his home. They're close. It's easier when you gotta work five days a week and can't get out with the COVID-19 thing going on. How'd you catch that fish? With that fishing pole. Oh wow, was it hard? Mm -hmm. All right. The wildlife boys just restarted stocking the community ponds they held off for several weeks for fear of attracting too many people to these small waters during the virus outbreak. But so far, people are playing it safe. We're helping Brennan Hannafin dump hundreds of catchable-sized rainbow trout from his Springville hatchery here at Midas Pond, Kidney Ponds in South Jordan, Willow Pond in Murray, Sunset Pond in Draper, Millrace Pond in Taylorsville, and Bountiful Pond. So we see them going in and we see them coming out. 
Why do you come here? Because it's close. It's like five minutes away from my house. How's the fishing been? It's been good. Four casts, three fish. What are you going to do with these fish? My husband's going to cook them. <laughs> he loves fish. This family is here celebrating a special day. Took fish for my dad's birthday. Oh, it's your dad's birthday? Yes. How's the fishing been? It's been all right. It's been fun. This is a great way to spend your birthday? None better. None better. Out here fishing with the grandkids and the kids. How's the fishing been? Not pretty good. The kids have caught a couple. I'm, I've been skunked, but I got them set up pretty good, so we're doing all right. Nick Hayes of West Jordan wears the perfect baseball jersey for fishing at Willow Pond. Willow Pond has been really good lately. Um, I've caught, they stocked it on Tuesday night, I believe, and I've caught like 36 fish in like a week's time frame. Pretty good sizes, like 15, 16 inches. The biggest one was a 2.25 cat pound catfish that I caught the other day. The limit at these ponds is two fish. Nick usually puts his back, but not after getting pictures. Garlic power bait seems to be doing the trick. Although these real fishermen don't seem to need any bait, just big bills. Folks come to these ponds for many reasons. Some just to feed the ducks, others maybe to get a little closer together. Often the fishing doesn't even matter. For some, it's just a great place to bring the kids. And after a quick trip around the lake, we return to find Dustin and Grandpa Steve have been busy. A very successful day at a neighborhood fishing pond. Uh, really set up for young kids can ride their bikes here and fish. It's, it's really ex inexpensive for them to get involved in fishing. Just about anybody that wants to take some time and don't have a lot of time, they can come down and, and fish and, and enjoy the experience of fishing. Stay safe, keep your distance, wear a mask, and get outdoors and catch a fish. Reese Stein at your leisure with this week's Where To Adventure. Can-Am off-road vehicles are always ready to get the job done. For every harvest, hunt, and ride. Because those who don't stop need a machine that won't quit. And now, at the Ready to Ride event, get up to $3,000 off on select 2019 models. Visit your local Can-Am dealer for details. And we will see you next week on the county seat. Welcome back to At Your Leisure, everybody. We are in Katie's kitchen, my favorite place to be. <laughs> And we are cooking up some good yardly beef today. We are. We are actually cooking a beef chow mein casserole. You have got to try this. It's absolutely delicious. So what's in it? Two pounds steak burger, one medium onion diced, two to three carrots diced, three celery stalks diced, an eight ounce can of water chestnuts drained, two cans of cream of mushroom soup, a third of a cup soy sauce, and about four cups of chow mein noodles. Boom. So what's the procedure? All right. Well, let's start off. I'm going to have you hand me that uh, beautiful ground steak burger. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. So we actually will put that right here into the pan. Delectable. Ooh. Mm, yum, yum. So that we want to just break this up. 
get your ground beef, brown it up, and then this is where I like to season my beef, okay? We do some salt. Yep, nice. Salt and pepper, and pretty much this is the only seasoning you need in this dish, a little salt and pepper. All right, perfect. Looks like I think we've got that chopped up pretty good Beautiful. there. Just gonna take a few minutes to brown it up and then, right. then we'll add the rest of the ingredients. Yum. So that's beautiful, Katie. What do we do next? All right, this is where we wanna start adding our veggies. Ooh, yum, yum. We add our onion. Mm -hmm. Our carrots. And you have more. Yeah. Always eat with your eyes first. Isn't that the truth? That's true. And the celery. So we wanna add our mirepoix to this and then cook this just to get the veggies a little bit softened. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's beautiful. So this will take probably about five, about five minutes is all. Okay. Once we get to this step, we'll add our little water chestnuts. Mm. This is, gives it the little Asian flair too. These gives it a nice, very nice texture. Yeah, it makes the, it puts the crunch in it there. Does. That's why we don't put that in with the other vegetables because you want to put it in towards the end so it saves that crunch. You just add them at the last second. Now what we'll do, if you would pass me the soy sauce. Oh, yum, yes. All right, now it's time. I'll switch. Let, let's put in the uh, cream of mushroom soup. Oh, okay. So yeah, if you want to pass that casserole dish over here. Yeah. So pour that in there. Perfect. Look oh at look at that. That is beautiful. Just yep. want to kind of even it out so that it bakes evenly. Okay. But it's I mean it's, it smell that already. So oh. can you I mean it smell doesn't that smell mm, amazing? Oh my gosh, I can't wait to eat this. Then we'll cover it with foil. We want to bake at 375 degrees for about 30 minutes. All right. All right, we're good. 30 minutes. Katie, it smells amazing. What's our next step? You know what? We got to take it out of the oven, okay. take the foil off. We'll put the chow mein noodles on and then put it back in for 10 to 15 minutes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You want to get that oven for me? Yes. Thank you. I love your oh, helping me in the kitchen. I am just delighted. <laughs> so now this is where we want to, I generously put, you can put less, you know, more or less. This part here depends on your own personal taste. My family likes a lot. All right, perfect. Now we'll put this back in the oven. Okay. Ten to, nope, we're gonna leave it uncovered this time. We'll okay. put it back in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. Let it rest for 20 minutes after it comes out. Okay. And then we're gonna be eating. Oh, yum. Once you've taken it out of the oven, let it rest for 20 minutes, very important. Then after 20 minutes, we're ready to eat. Oh Are you hungry? Gosh. Indeed I am. <laughs> I've been waiting for this forever. Seems like forever. This all is right. what we've all been waiting for. Drum roll. Da -da 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 all right. Cheers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. The crunch, mm -hmm. the chest, water chestnuts, the meat. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, vegetables. Yeah, those water chestnuts with that little bit of crunch on top of, well, they're not as crunchy as the noodles, but they give a nice veggie crunch. Beautiful. Listen, you guys gotta try this out. If you wanna take this, if you wanna try this recipe, go right here and you can get the recipe. If you wanna get this delicious yardly beef, right here as well. And I highly suggest you use the beef because that's what makes this dish it so darn good. It does. All right, perfect, thank you. Well, so, let's, let's finish eating. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll see you next time and we're gonna be like chowing on this. all in a hard day's play. Find out how many ways you can fill up a day at uintobasin.org. Hey honey, have you seen this tire? Do you think we'll make it? Not on that thing. Don't let bad tires ruin your trip. With service stations at every location along I-15, we can get you back on the road with fast, friendly, professional service. Eagle's Landing has everything you need along the way. Even the things you didn't know you'd need. Get ready for the road at Eagle's Landing. I promised my son that if he got straight A's, the two of us would take a guy's trip. We were riding on the Lincoln Loop Trail outside Minersville, Utah. There was so much to explore, and the trail just kept climbing higher, right to the very top of a mountain called Jack's Peak. We just stood for a while, taking in the whole world below. On the way back to camp, my son turned to me and said, I love you, Dad. Then suddenly it hit me. This wasn't just another camping trip.
Outdoors is the healthiest place to be during our current health situation, but only when we practice responsible recreation while getting away. When exploring Utah, do the following. Limit gatherings to 10 people or less and keep at least six feet apart. Sanitize hard surfaces before and after you touch them. Send a single person into shopping locations. And when making purchases, use credit cards rather than cash. Most important, if you don't feel normal, don't go. Stay safe and have fun out there. You could build a movie set and it wouldn't look any cooler than this. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We're in an otherworldly place, the San Rafael Swell, with a bunch of locals and some of the local community leaders finding out about what life is like here after the public lands bill. And we're finding out a great deal. The best part of it all is that no matter what you do out here, it's fun. And there's a lot to see and a lot of history and a lot to do. Let's find out about it. I love coming out here. Um, it's a good place to get away uh, from everything else. There are easy rides. There are some technical rides out here, but for the most part, all these trails are loops. They come back to a certain point. It's a day ride. You get home and, you, and you've had an awesome outing. When you bring people out here, they're, you know, this is open. We can camp there, we can camp there, we can ride here, and, and, and some responses are, really? No way, you don't have to pay for anything, no, nothing. You get your gear, you get your supplies, you fill up, and you go on a day ride and you have a fun time. There are a lot of challenging places out there still. We have improved some of the major trails that people like to travel, uh, that a lot of novice people will want to go on and they can. But there are still a lot of really difficult tough terrains for those who like to have that experience also. Well to me the monuments is them old cabins that them uh, the Swayze brothers lived in. I mean they lived out there with their cattle because you know it's uh, a day's ride back to town on a horseback so it's quite, quite interesting. A lot of history out here. Of course Butch Cassidy and the Wild Bunch were on this area and this was their one of their hideouts, uh, one of many I suppose. I can't tell you how many times that you will see Spanish writings Native American writings, and sometimes you'll see pictographs and pictographs, which would indicate that there's been three different eras of people over a period of thousands of years take that same place, it's that same trail. And it is true all throughout our country. It seems like every time you come around to Bend down here, you run across some unique feature. This is called the drip. Now, in the biblical times, this would have been like some kind of miracle because out of this cliff of dry rock, there's this one spot that water just appears and it makes its way from down here to a stream. And of course, cattle and the wildlife have all found out about it and they make it a regular. But this is just really remarkable. And I gotta tell you, this is something that if you bring your family out here and you've got young kids, they will remember this moment for the rest of their lives. I know because I brought my kids out here when they were young and they're adults now and they still talk about the water that came out of a rock. Of course, might have to do that I made up some wild harebrained idea about what it really was, but they still remember it and they still talk about it. So create those family memories. Right now though, it's time for us to step away from here for yet another memory to be made in our Along the Way. Our friends at UTV Utah are always advocating for our off-road community. Whether it be fighting for access to keep trails open, or in this case, proposing a plan for city government to establish new trails for posterity. We are working with Harriman City Council and the Harriman Parks and Rec Department to try to get OHV friendly trails in the hills behind Harriman. Lots of uh, mountain bike trails are going in, lots of hiking trails are going in and they can have the front of the mountains, that's great, close to the homes. We're working with the city to try to get OHV friendly trails on the back side of the mountain where it's safe, they're legitimate marked trails, and that will also help keep illegal riders off of the trails on the front of the mountain. So we're trying to work and get OHV trails set for all motorized disciplines, be it motorcycles, side-by-sides, four-wheelers, or even Jeeps and maybe some full-size. 
Members bring their street legal vehicles on Mondays at Harriman City Hall to enjoy food trucks, socialize, and tell others what excites them about the potential trails. We moved to Utah for the trail system um, and we absolutely love it and we have this perfect atmosphere for it and nowhere to get to it. So um, that's the biggest reason we'd like to add a trail going over South Mountain. Um, just for lots of fun and activity and enjoy what we have here. Long term, we would like to try to work with other entities so that those trails be could be connected into possibly other counties so that you could drive over the mountains and get to Utah County and maybe get to five mile without even having to drive on the highway. Currently, the proposed trail is undergoing a feasibility study and will soon be open for public comments. If you'd like to stay updated on the process, Dwayne will tell you how. Go on Facebook and join our group Citizens for OHV Trails in Harriman. I know, long name. <laughs> but that is where we place updates and communicate with folks that are interested in either helping out or knowing what's going on. In the meantime, come to the regular meetups that UTV Utah holds at Harriman City Hall and let your voice be heard. We mostly participate by just being present and showing that we would like for the trail system to be expanded um, and also show that we uh, follow the rules and, and clean up after ourselves and those kinds of things. Join the group. Come on down to our food truck uh, meetups that we love. We love to take advantage of this wonderful opportunity the city does. Come socialize with us. Help us show the community that folks that like to ride side-by-sides are normal folks just like everyone else. So whether it's on the trails or in your own neighborhood, we hope to see you advocating for our excellent off-road community somewhere along the way. For At Your Leisure, I'm Nick Chase. Life's busy. The family is all headed in different directions. Work, school, sports. How do you pull everyone together? Stedman's Recreation can help you explore the outdoors and create memories to last a lifetime. Stedman's Recreation has Utah's largest selection of recreational vehicles. Side-by-sides, ATVs, dirt bikes, street bikes, electric bikes, trailers, and accessories. Yamaha, Honda, Polaris, and Beta. Plus, Stedman's has a full-service department of Honda power equipment. Stedman's Recreation in Tooele. You may think it's 300 miles out here, but remember, it's only 30 miles back. You know, when you're out in the desert, out in the San Rafael Swell, you find all kinds of things, big things, gargantuan things, little things, tiny things, like a needle. Like that is needle arch. And you know what? If you were driving by and you blinked, you'd miss it. It's just a sliver of an arch off of the end of a rock formation. Well, we've had a lot of fun out here. In fact, we've eaten well. Our lunch today was provided by B&K uh, in Huntington. Now, B&K, uh, their, their, their sandwiches are huge. I mean, 
I won't need dinner tonight, so Rhea, don't worry about making me any. Anyway, right now, it's time for us to get off to our weekly business. We've got a sticker winner for you. Okay, this week's contest winner was submitted to us on Facebook. It's Lee Warnkin. Congratulations, Lee. It looks like you're the winner of a $400 gift certificate to Rifab. Rifab offers the best custom metal fabrication for your rig. Visit Rifab.com for more details. Be sure to call us on Monday at 801-947-8888 to claim your prize. Now, let's take a look at our Trail of the Week. This week's Trail of the Week is the Vernon Cherry Creek section of the Prospector Trail. The Prospector Trail system is located in Tooele County and covers approximately 700 miles. To get more information or to see this or any of the other trails we've covered on the Trail 360 project, visit Outsiders.Zone. Now, let's take a look at next week's show. Next week, Kevin and Gina are getting out of their comfort zone and heading north to show off some great hiking trails located right here on the Wasatch Front. Remember, Salt Lake is a vacation to them. Then, the ride of the Butch Cassidy Loop continues as we head back out to Anemone to pick up where Kevin and Gina left off and ride through Garfield County over to Loa. It's part two of our three-part trail ride, so be sure not to miss it. Finally, we're getting back out on the trail with Stedmans as we join them for a fun-filled family celebration and, as always, a good time out in the desert. Well, look, next week's show looks like it's going to be a good one, but it really cannot be today being out in the swell with all these swell folks. That's kind of a corny joke. I'm sure you guys have all heard it before. Anyway, we'd like to uh, thank, a special thanks to Sidetrax Rentals here in Farron for setting us up with the machines. And you know, you might think about it, you don't have to trail your own uh, machine down here. You just hop in one of theirs, rent one for the day. They can set you up, get you out on the trail, tell you where you need to go. And so you have a real memorable occasion. Thanks to the commissioners, thanks to the Senator, thanks to Brett for setting things up and thanks to State Parks for maintaining a wonderful OHV system here in the state. So as we say every week, there is adventure around every band just got to get up off the couch and get out there, create your own adventure at your leisure. Hey, can we go again?